In today's video, I want to take a look at the differences between text files and binary files and what are the advantages or disadvantages. First things first, let's look at an overview of the actual uh, implementation of reading and writing to text files versus reading and writing to binary files. That, that's going to be very quick, I promise. So on the left here, we have the reading and writing to binary. And on the right, we have the program that reads and writes to text. So when opening, we just have to remember that we have to suffix this mode with a B for binary and without that for text, simple enough. Nothing different there. When writing, we have to do something very different. Whereas for binary, we can just use the F write function and just point it to, well, whatever data we want to actually write in binary inside the text and simply just say, okay, well, I want here, here's the pointer for it. And I want you to print out on the file uh, X amount of bytes, simple enough, right? But when it comes to writing to a file, it's a bit more different, right? As we saw previously, we could use a uh, buffer or with sprintf and fwrite, or we could use simply fprintf. I'm using fprintf here since it's much more fast, it's faster, but it still uses a buffer uh, in uh, inside its inside its definition. So this guy, instead of taking in a uh, pointer and a number of bytes is actually takes in a format string, like in any printf method. And then it just kind of, you just kind of give it the actual values that you want to put in that format string, right? And this format string is important when also reading from the file with the same format. All right, so, uh, and then we just simply close it in both uh, scenarios. You'll notice the return value is different. This guy, is ret this guy returns the bytes that you wrote onto the file and this guy returns the actual elements return. So that's different. And then when reading, again, the B suffix, we don't have, we have to not forget about that. And then at uh, the reading function, we can use F read for reading all the, reading the bytes themselves, or we can use F scan F for reading a line of text from text files, right? So F read again, like F write takes in a place in memory to write to this time and the number of bytes to read from the file, simple enough. We don't have new lines in binary files, so we don't have to care about them. Whereas in text files we do, and we do care about them here in the format string. Well, uh, similarly to fprintf, what we have here is again a format string and places to put that data uh, from the file into, right? That's why we have addresses here. So this is similar to a scanf call, for example. And notice this format string is the same as the fwrite or the fprintf call format string. That's very important to be the same. And then after all that, everything is basically the same. Just the, even, even the return, even the return value is almost the same. So if you take out the writing to a text file part of our program, and as you have seen before, if we take a look at the file itself, we can actually edit it like any other text file because it's simply a text file. I can say here negative two. And then if I try to run this, I'm going to get negative two in here. So that's very intuitive. And as a matter of fact, you can change this format to be any way you want. Really, you can say, uh, you can be, you can have it be, for example, X, then colon, and then Y, then colon, if you really want to, right? Just, it just matters that you have the same format string for both writing and reading. Now, certainly you can do the same with uh, binary files. It's just that it's much more difficult to find out which is uh, which, right? So if I have this guy here, well, um, sure, I know that I have two integers here because I know that I'm storing them as ints, but what if they were, for example, long longs, so then there will be eight bytes uh, each. So I would have 16 bytes on there. And I want to know that eight bytes were representing just one coordinate. Right? So you would kind of have to take a look at the structure itself. 
Whereas with a text file, you don't have to do that. It's just a number, it's just a simple, it's just simple characters. So there's a first advantage for using text files. Um, a disadvantage, however, is in actual read write speed. So uh, since we are basically writing to a buffer here, when we're writing to the file, right, as, as I implemented in the first video regarding writing to text files, we were using a buffer and that's what uh, fprintf uses basically. Um, this guy has to be created and then it can be written to the file byte by byte and that's kind of slow, right? And it's much longer than simply reading or writing uh, just eight bytes on the screen, right? It can be uh, however many characters uh, that a number is basically if you have a uh, four digit number you would be writing four characters if you have a 10 digit number then you would be writing 10 characters on the on the file basically 10 bytes on to that file so that'd be much uh much slower same with uh reading besides actually uh reading the characters themselves you also have to do some pre-processing Right, you have to somehow find out that oh, okay, I have to read a a uh, digit from that file, so I have to buffer this guy and say oh, okay, so here from the the left part of the of the line, right from the comma, is actually our x coordinate, and the right part is our y coordinate. Right. Whereas with binary files, you don't have to do any of this. I'm not doing any sort of uh, buffering. I'm just simply, basically the actual place in memory is the buffer. I'm just writing it onto the file and so it goes. And same thing with reading. I don't have to pre-process it to decide where X is or where Y is because that's just the memory itself. I'm just simply, the way P1 was represented in memory, I'm copying that to the file, right? So those eight bytes and then I'm just copying that those eight bytes from the file itself back onto P2. So that's why we have the same values there, right? There's no pre-processing, there's no, no where does it say that, oh, okay, this first uh, number is actually the X coordinate or is the Y coordinate. Now, this is nice. Reading and writing to binary is faster than text files. That's to be expected. But a downside, so the third, difference is that well this guy might not be compatible between platforms what do i mean by that if i change the example a bit so that p1 has something more extra that might not be portable between architectures we might see a a wrong result so what can we add inside the struct we can add a simple pointer i can say here I don't know, let's say char pointer, PTR, let's call it. And since this is a pointer on a 32-bit compiler, you're going to get a 4-byte uh, size pointer. On a 64-bit compiler, you're going to get an 8-byte sized pointer. So, and let's give it also a value. Let's give it dot PTR equals, I don't know, let's give it 0x, um, 11 let's say that's 11 in hexadecimal so we might we should see that in memory but okay now that we have all this now that we have added a pointer here what's the size of this point well if we count it quite really should be this guy is four bytes on a 32-bit system then we have those eight bytes that we had before so it's just 12 bytes Right, so if I try to actually evaluate this size of point here, it's 12u. So that makes sense. Nice. Now that I know that, if I run this, it still read the x and y coordinates properly. And I can still reload this. And you'll notice that now I have a few extra things here. Right, so the first one is uh, our pointer that we have added. The second one is now our X coordinate and the third one is our Y coordinate. That worked. But, but what if we change this to 64 bit? 
and I try to run it again. Hmm. If I reload it, you'll notice that the result is completely different. As you can see, we now get 16 bytes written to the file. That's because, well, pointers are 8 bytes inside a 64-bit uh, compiler. So now we're getting this guy, these first 8 bytes representing the pointer and then the last two representing the, or the last 8 bytes representing the X and Y coordinates. Why that would be a problem? Well, if I, for example, if I have this file and I try to remove the right part, from the file, so we're just reading now. If I try to run it on 64-bit, it works nicely. We get 13 and negative one. What if I do the same on 32-bit? As you can see, I got zero and 13. So as you can see, 13 is actually our X coordinate, but it got uh, confused with the Y coordinate and then the X coordinate didn't get any value, it's zero. That's because inside the point dot bin, you see in a 32-bit system, well, our point structure is only 12 bytes. So it looked at the first 12 bytes and just copied and pasted it directly onto the uh, variable's memory, right? So uh, the first four bytes represented the pointer, which was okay. And then the, the next four bytes represented the X value, which were just zeros. So that, that wasn't okay. And then the next four bytes represented the Y, which was actually the X value, 13, remember? So this is a disadvantage with um, with binary files. Now, if I try to do the same for our pointer, well, what I notice is, well, first let's give it a value. So we have, again, 0x11 one, one is a nice value. Um, what I notice is that I have to change some things, right? I have to change my uh, format string. For it. So that's that's a bit of a disadvantage. So let's just add it here. So another comma, and then I can do percent p from pointer or address. I can say that p1.ptr. And the format string has to be the same for reading, or at least yeah, it has to be the same for reading. And then I'm gonna read it to p2.ptr. And I'm gonna also try to print it on the screen so that we can see that. The, all the values are correct. If I try to run this, you'll notice read from file the point 13, negative 1, and that. Now we are on 32 bit. So I change to 64 bit and do the same thing. That worked nicely. You notice the pointer is longer, that's because it has four extra bytes and that's why it's a bit longer, but that's fine. And if I actually try to uh, remove the right part, if I do this and run it again, it's just gonna read it and it's gonna work. But if I change the architecture, you'll notice we get the same result. That be that's because, well, what we wrote uh, onto that file, it got interpreted as being 11, right? As being the value 11, even though if we take a look at the point of that, it's a bit longer than 11, that's not, really a problem in our case, right? It got fixed by itself. We didn't change anything between architectures. That's what that's what I'm getting at. Between architectures, we didn't change anything. Whereas for the binary read and write, we have to change something for it to work. Sure, there are some fixes for that. Sure, you can actually treat uh, the 32-bit and the 64-bit architecture separately when reading and writing to a file when dealing with pointers. That's fine, you can do that. It's just going to take a little bit more work and sometimes just a text file might do. So these are the three main differences between binary, between using binary and text files, right? First one was uh, ease of use or just usability, let's call it. Second one was performance, right? Binary is better in this case. And third one is portability. Right? So just make sure you know of all these differences when choosing between a binary and a text file. Otherwise you might get into some really nasty bug fixing if you, for example, forget about portability when dealing with binary files. Right. So I hope you got something out of this video. 
thank you guys so much for watching if you do have any questions about binary files about text files about reading and writing in general do leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server take care bye